Previously on Voice Wars. Now, as for the next challenge, I'm a little undecided. <laughs> because this challenge is called Neutrality. Oh boy. Each team shall be given what is called a neutral scene or open scene. <laughs> it's off to Switzerland. Wow. That's up to you guys. Have any, any preference for roles so far? I have a preference for Lily being A. <laughs> I'm fine with that. The two of you know each other. You're having drinks at the bar. You're either a couple or good friends from work or whatever. You're there to talk to each other. And I'm just uh, your disco sleazeball from the 70s. Welcome to this week's Voice Wars Challenge. Well, why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know why not. Uh, oh, I forgot. I, uh... mm -hmm. Oh, let's just go. I'll just follow you. I wouldn't. Yeah, you'll be sorry. Oh, you think so? Guys, what did you think about Team Bragley Affair's entry? Maybe it's probably because we're on the internet. I thought the scene could have used a little bit more flow. What did you guys think about Team Katana's entry? We could see just how cohesive a unit the three of you were. Uh, Sarah, you were hilarious. Uh, your facial expressions alone. The winner for this week's challenge. For the second week in a row, Sarah Blandy is the winner. <laughs> Damn. Way to go, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Our bottom two competitors for this week are Walt Allen and Abby Veffer. Lying monsters are a real nuisance. They're much more cunning than others. I would likely be eaten by them. Because in truth, I am that monster. Abby Veffer, you're safe. You drew yeah. a bad card. It's a good technique you employed. You have been so damn good in this competition, and I yes. really want you to keep well, pushing. Thank you. I've learned a lot. Thank you all very much. Great job, Walt. Great job, Walt. Amazing you, Great job buddy. my teammates. Thank you. <laughs>
never been something that I could do. Uh, <laughs> really, you know, the only impression I can do is share, and only when she's singing. Mom, Phineas, and Ferber make me a title sequence, and I know that I can do that line. So if I can do that line, maybe I can do more. What do you think you could do with her that like makes the whole thing funny? Oh my yeah. gosh, I mean, uh, every episode, Candace finds a way to be just stressed out about her brothers. <laughs> There's nothing she does for herself that she doesn't end up worrying about her brothers. So, I mean, Candace on a dating show is gonna end up talking about her brothers. Luckily, my coach, uh, we actually had a, a pretty nice email about, you know, how nervous I was about this because I just like, I've never done this before. And yeah. so I'm actually working with uh, a friend of my coach, uh, so he, he put me in touch with a friend of his that I'm going to be emailing tonight, actually, to maybe set up a time tomorrow to just kind of like sit Oh, down. damn. Yeah, no, my coach is going above and beyond for this. An incredible manic, an incredible impressionist, and is hopefully going to give me some pointers. I have chosen Olga Pataki from the 90s show Hey Arnold. It's funny, I was actually watching an episode of Hey Arnold the day before. Uh, the last competition. And I was kind of mimicking her voice to my husband a little, and it got to the point where he's like, please stop, it's too accurate. <laughs> because when you're a kid watching it, she's she's so overwhelming in terms of like how perfect she is, because you are seeing it from like Helga's eyes. Um, but now that I'm older, um, you know, you can really see how she kind of comes off as like this perfectionist, but not because she thinks she's better than people, it's just, that's just the complex that she ended up getting. Can you give me kind of a taste of what you're gonna do there? Like, I'll give you like an example question. Like, hey Olga, what did you have for lunch today? Oh, so I went to this beautiful French restaurant um, called Tre Pierre. It was so wonderful. I had the escargot, which is snails, in case you didn't know. I was hoping to spend some time with my baby sister Helga, but she didn't want to come, but that's fine. Um, I don't mind being alone <laughs> sometimes, but. But yeah, that's what I have for lunch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love my it. Poor, <laughs> my poor husband had to hear that <laughs> all the time. I love it. Yeah, I'm excited to see everyone else's too. For this challenge, I'm choosing Minoru Mineta from My Hero Academia. I was trying to think of obviously all the all the cartoons and anime and you know animation that I watch and just trying to think of, of just characters in general that I'd be able to do voice for. Um, just because, you know, you don't want to get hung up on, on a voice that you might not be able to do for a long period of time. And since this is improv, I wanted to make sure that it was a voice that I could do. Um, and then I thought, like, next level after that, I thought, who would be on a dating show? Uh, <laughs> who would actually benefit from being on a dating show? And I was I was thinking about it and I was like, well, you know, you don't want to pick like a like a married character who's like happily married in a show, for instance, because then on a dating show there there's not as much material to grab, you know, there's not as much um, you know, inspiration to to get because in reality, they're not, they wouldn't be on a dating show. So I was trying to think of a character who's on a dating show. And then I, I thought of Minoru because he's, you know, he's girl crazy. And so I felt that it would be appropriate for him to be on a dating show. And yeah, I, I think that, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of where I'm going with that one. Can I get a little taste of what he's going to sound like? Um, I'll just ask a quick question. So, Minetta, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? You know, it was really a hard thing to decide, but I decided on French toast. <laughs> layers, and so cinnamon, and warm, and just fills up my stomach, and that's, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> We're still in the early goes of this, and you still have time to, like, I yeah. <laughs> I'm still working through it. I'm very excited for this one. <laughs> I have selected Yzma, the Emperor's new group. Why'd you choose that character? When I heard the prompt for this next challenge, it was the first thing that popped in my head. I thought, <laughs> stick with it. She's got that great laugh. Mm -hmm. And I have kind of an evil laugh naturally. Um, and because she's, in general, a very calculating person, 
I think that translates in a funny way to regular conversation. There's always something that she's planning. There's always some kind of ulterior motive. It's a great way to just make anything weird. to this week's Voice Wars Challenge. In a few minutes, we're going to bring out our cartoon bachelors and bachelorettes. Uh, but first, let's check up on our judges. Uh, KG Tang, how you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Retina, how you been? We're doing good. Um, you know, we're just trying to stay sane and keep calm and carry on over here. I appreciate your hairstyle solidarity oh, with so your team in, member. In solidarity with Sarah. Oh, it's beautiful. We have Perfect. a little Minetta action. And Chris over here doing his usual Jesus Christ Superstar solidarity hair. I'm doing well. I do have to vent, though. I The Game of Thrones board game came out yesterday. I was in the middle of a four and a half hour game that froze up at 1.30 in, in the morning on the no. last turn. No! No! And Brad, you seem to be no stranger to board games with your background. How's it going, Brad? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> figured I'd have a, you know, a little bit of a change of scenery. And finally, our guest judge and our Anna Matchmaker contestant for this week. You know her as Retzko's mom in Agretzko, Tommy from Mr. Pickles, and Felicia from the Disney series Amphibia. Please welcome Miss Caitlin Robrock. How you doing? Hi, everyone. So glad to be here. Thank you. I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. Put your hands together for Anna Matchmaker, America's favorite cartoon dating show. Here's your host, Aiden Rudd. All right, let's get this started. Caitlin, you are going to get to ask three questions to our five bachelors and bachelorettes, and they'll give you their best answers. But let's meet our contestants first. First up, we've got Miss Candice Flynn. How are you doing, Candice? Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, you know, it, it's, been, it's been a day. Uh, I am... Uh... I'm relaxed though, I'm chill, New Year's resolution, I am focused, I'm not thinking about anyone, no one else, not my two brothers. Up next we've got our sole bachelor on the panel, from the UA Superhero Academy, we've got Minoru Mineta, how's it going sir? I'm doing very well, thank you so much for asking, I'm here looking for love. <laughs> Now, coming all the way from South America, it is Empress Yzma. How's life going for you lately? I am doing very well. I've decided to grace you all with my presence today. You feel very lucky. Now for our next contestant, all the way from Japan, Miss Haruhi Suzumiya. Now, please don't tell me that you're feeling melancholy right now. I'm bored, actually. Do you know how hard it is to find aliens, time travelers, and espers in quarantine? I could not tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and our final contestant from the Bronx, Miss Olga Pataki. What have you been up to lately? Oh, thank you so much for asking. I'm very fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm oh, doing that's great. Wonderful. I'm very happy for you, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's get things started. Caitlin Robrock, what is your first question for our contestants? Contestants, we are going out for dinner and a movie. What would we eat and what would we watch? That's a very good question. What I would end up doing is we would go to a nice fancy French restaurant, order some <laughs> um, beef bourguignon or beef stew or something like that. Maybe finish up with some tiramisu. And then for a movie, I was thinking we could just go home. Maybe uh, I'll put on my most favorite movie, Amadeus. It's just <laughs> such a wonderful movie. Amadeus Mocha is my hero. And uh, I just... I just have a lot of feelings about that movie, but, um, I'll just leave it at that. It's just so good. You know, usually I'm a, a fan of Netflix and chill. I want to eat whatever you love to eat, and then we will go to the movies and watch the most, the bestest romantic comedy that I can think of, The Holiday, starring Caitlin Flynn and Jude Law. I would think of all people you would want Dodgeball. <laughs> oh, that would be a very good one, but I love a good one. Candace, what would you what would you do? Restaurants. Am I telling you about the time that my brothers built a five star restaurant in our backyard? <laughs> <laughs> and the whole town was there, raving reviews. I couldn't even get a seat. <laughs> and then when I grabbed my mom, you know, to, to show her, it was gone. <laughs> Did you see when that happens? 
do. What was the question? <laughs> Caitlin, what's your next question for our competitors? I love singing, and karaoke is just what the doctor ordered. What song would you sing? And I am telling you, I'm not going. <laughs> the one that I want, and you're gonna love me. <laughs> Mineta, what you got? Can you sing? Oh, yeah, of course I can sing. How else am I gonna serenade the ladies? Such a good heart, and uh, I love a good romantic song, of course. So I probably would pick a thousand miles by Vanessa Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> can we get a sample of that? <laughs> Absolutely, you can. If I could walk a thousand miles, you think time would pass me. <laughs> if you know I'd walk a thousand miles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get away from that for a second. <laughs> Honey, what you got? Whatever your favorite song is, if you give me an hour, I can learn it to sing and on guitar. I had to do that once for a school festival, so maybe I could sing the song from that too if you want. What was the song? God knows, but it's not the Beach Boy song. <laughs> <laughs> I could serenade you. I would probably sing Time After Time by Cindy Lauper. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> you get lost, you can look, and you will find me. Time after time. If you fall, I will catch you. Oh, wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. If I, were, if I were to rate that performance, I'd give it a B plus. I haven't gotten a B plus since my sister Helga tricked me that one time. Please tell me you're not serious, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> and now on to our final question. Oh, it was a tough one, but I think I've decided to ask. These days, sometimes we feel a little down with the world ending and all. So I'd love to know from my contestants, what is the best way to crush your enemy? I am so glad you asked, Caitlin. My specialty is potions. And my favorite potion is one that will turn my opponent into a small little bug. Just crushable enough to hear a crunch when I smack it into pieces. And then, after that, I crush it into fine powder. So fine you can do almost anything with it. And after that, well, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. I'd like to hear what you would do with it. Oh. Well, <laughs> probably add a little water and then make it into a fine lip gloss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's a fine answer indeed. Best way to crush someone would probably be absolutely and completely and humiliatingly. But you have a lot of options that you could go with. You get an entire space fleet that files, fires all on them at once. But then it wouldn't work if they were like Luke Skywalker and they just brush it off. But you could time travel back in time to right when they're bored and then you kill them then. Or you could slide into a universe where they never existed in the first place. Somehow Haruhi has this more thought out than Yzma has. <laughs> I'm very impressed, I will say that. <laughs> Thank you, I've thought about it a lot. I'm still trying to figure it out, honestly. I've spent most of my adult life, um, a young adult life, trying to bust people. <laughs> I haven't quite figured it out yet, but here's the gist. <clears throat> See them do something. Get mom. Bring mom. They are still doing it. Voila! So you need a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought of maybe varying up your methods? No. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can't do that. I'm, I'm a big bundle of neuroses, okay? I stick with what I know. Olga, what's your plan? Well, I like to think that I don't have that many enemies, but to answer the question of crushing them, I suppose I'd crush them with kindness. Because some people just can't stand that, I've heard. So maybe make a bunch of baked goods, maybe uh, cook a foreign meal for them. Probably one that they've never heard of and don't like. Uh, maybe play um, the magic flute opera really loud. Um, I've heard some people don't like opera and I don't understand. But I suppose I would just play that really loud. And hopefully that would... Um, Crush them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that is all of the answers for our contestants. Caitlin, who do you choose to go on a date with? So many tasty answers. But I think I'm going to be picking Yzma. <laughs> <laughs> you chose wisely. This is a way to get on the good side of bad side. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
you everybody so much for joining us for Anna Matchmaker. We will see you later and good night! So now it's going to be time for our judges' critiques. First up, Nicole Tuttle as Candace Flynn. I would have loved to hear a little bit more from you in terms of like, you know, some of her catchphrases and her, her quirky things, because her brothers, they're not just in trouble. What are they? They're busted. And with the, the, the whole like dating question, you know, oh, dinner and a movie with Jeremy? I think sometimes it, it kind of leaned into, and this kind of happens whenever you're, um, you were a bit kind of like one trackish with it. It was like, okay, I got to catch him doing something, turn him into mom, and then they're never there. So kind of just kind of burying that up, even if you, you know, mentioned the platypus parry or some, mm -hmm. some, just something to kind of bury it up a little bit and kind of like um, Retina was saying with uh, the catchphrase, something more give us a fuller world of what, um, what Candace is. Sarah Blandy. I wanted to close my eyes and listen because the, the gesticulation and the facial expression was almost so funny it was distracting, but it comes through in the voice. So I can say without a doubt that it's one of my favorite characters I've ever heard you do. And, you know, it was just one of those things where it lives in that masculine tone that could go either way. It could be performed uh, by male or female, I think, given the right talent. And I think it was just, it was right so close to spot on i just i am so impressed i was a fan of the the layering in the scene there's you know obviously Minetta is like this giant loser <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but the way you presented him was you know he he was you can imagine him in like the little like the really cheap walmart tie and he's mm -hmm. got his <laughs> got his weird sticky orb slicked back and he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm awful. Awesome. And that's what came across. It was really fun. I think if I had like a note, I think you could have gone further. <laughs> I think there were more places where you could have like made those little inferences and, and relayed little more nuance of his character and how he would relate to, to Caitlin. Um, in this situation, so well done. Yeah, I will say you probably could have thrown in another sticky ball reference because I did pitch you that dodgeball line, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you got it the rest of the way. Abby Veffer. This character would not be on a dating show. <laughs> <laughs> I said they would not be on a dating show, but in it, attempt to win. For some reason, you need to play this dating game and you need to win, but you can get excited about kind of the evil things you do. So honestly, it was it was so much fun. I was so proud of you, knowing that like you took that direction and, and I don't know, and then you won with it. You know, the consistency was there, the the characterization was there. I was hoping to have a little bit of that 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 sizzly Eartha Kit, mm -hmm. you know, to ends, you know, almost mm -hmm. you know pushing it towards the Catwoman stuff a little bit. But other than that, I'm like. I got nothing to complain about. And if I did, she'd kill me anyway, so. <laughs> Even if it's just a, an imitation or, or the impression, like the farther you go, the funnier it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Down there where no one can deny you. <laughs> Lily Lammers as Haruhi Suzumiya. Bravo for the cosplay job, too. <laughs> <laughs> <Pretty nice. laughs> a melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya was my very first voice job uh, ever. Uh, so uh, kudos for the representation. It's a great show, great character. Um, yeah, that uh, that is pretty much Hari. Um, uh, she's slightly narcissistic, thinks she can do anything, and I mean, can, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that came through. With everyone else I came in with, uh, knowing a little bit to knowing a lot about the character, this was one property I knew absolutely zero about, and I purposely did not educate myself on it because I wanted to see if you could make a full character out of it for me, and I really think out of everyone, you really did that. Um, I was very thoroughly impressed. Even though she's smiling, she's plotting your demise in four different <laughs> dimensions. It's beautiful. Um, so, well done, girl. Like, you know, high fives through the screen. And last, but definitely not least, Lisa Marie Lee as Olga Pataki. I really liked how specific you were with your hands. It, it gave us a lot of lore about the character. So even if we weren't familiar with um, uh, this p particular member of the Pataki family, um, we would have a very good image of what kind of person she is. I thought I thought Aiden threw you a great um, little character uh, thing with the uh, you got a B plus on your song, right? And you reacted appropriately. You're like, what do you mean? 
it gave you an opportunity to like hyperventilate react which i thought was a, a layer that i loved so much so that it was like i'm not trying to get on a date with caitlin at this point i'm freaking the f out of because i just i got a b plus oh my god you know and, and that was there really well done with uh kind of uh run with the answers and and come up with things that were specific and also in character and really cute i loved that you would kill them with kindness. I thought that was just <laughs> so freaking cute. <laughs> the judges will now vote on who they thought won this challenge. Don't make us choose. I mean, technically Abby <laughs> won the date, but... <laughs> the winner of today's challenge is... Lisa Marie Lee as Olga Pataki. <laughs> Great work, guys. Great work. Now the judges will be sending me their picks for the bottom two. Oh. Yeah, it's like I'm sorry. Pick between my favorite children, but I don't have children, so this will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Love oh. all of you. Our bottom two competitors for this week are Nicole Tuttle and Abby Veffer. Nicole, heads or tails? Heads. It is Tails. Uh, Abby, do you want to go first or second? I don't mind going first. Your monologue will be from Avatar The Last Airbender. All right. It is time to cold read for survival. I'm ready. Three, two, one. For so long, all I wanted was for you to love me, to accept me. I thought it was my honor I wanted, but really, I, I was just trying to please you. You, my father, who banished me just for talking out of turn. My father who challenged me, a 13-year-old boy, to an Agni Kai. How could you possibly justify a duel with a child? I've learned everything, and I've had to learn it on my own. Growing up, we were taught that the Fire Nation was the greatest civilization in history. And somehow the war was our way of sharing our greatness with the rest of the world. What an amazing lie that was. The people of the world are terrified by the Fire Nation. They don't see our greatness. They hate us. And we deserve it. We've created an era of fear in the world. And if we don't want the world to destroy itself, we need to replace it with an era of peace and kindness. Well, we have a result. And once again, it is like right, it is so close. It is three to two. Nicole Tuttle, you're safe. Abby, your monologue was stellar. I loved, I loved your Yzma, and I loved the choice for it. I thought that every week you have just balled out for this show, and it really shows in your work. This is just such a tough group, but you have been so rock solid, and I am so looking forward to seeing wherever you go from now on. Thank you for having me. This has been such a cool experience. Really, it's been an honor. Thank you all so much. We'll see you at work. That's right. <laughs> so, so we'll see you in the booth. Yep. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning into this episode of Voice Wars, and good night! I honestly felt that I did the very best I could, and I'm happy with what I did, and sometimes things just happen. I'm working on starting my own podcast. I have, like, a little preview episode up on my on my account, I guess, and I'm working on editing my, my first episode. So that's that's coming out. And other than that, I um, I'm hoping to maybe take some classes in November and December and just keep on working on my game. You know, Tinder in LA, where half of the matches are just looking to get with your agent. And has the that other been your half experience? Wants to sell you their this has game. happened to me. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that happened to me once. Four at eleven. <laughs> <laughs>